Welcome back! On this channel, we have covered many handhelds. Some brought back fond memories, whereas others raced ahead to the point where they couldn't make enough to satisfy demand. This is especially true with the Retro Pocket 3 Plus and the MiU Mini. In today's video, we'll check out a handheld that we got for $35 and there's plenty to go around. Welcome to Team Pandori. Like, subscribe and bell! Time for some magic. How about this? Wow. Today's package came from AliExpress, and it's the Pow Kitty V90. Wow, Kitty. This box has many sides, and it's red. Red is my favorite color, when Beverly is wrapped up in rubber. Let's open it up. We got this note that I can't read. Boy. And in the box we get a handheld, USB-A to USB-C charging cable, an instruction leaflet in both English and Chinese, and that's it. It's time to unsheath the handheld, and it's a pastel red. It's obviously designed to be similar to the Game Boy Advance SP, USB-C for charging, headphone socket, micro SD card slot, on and off switch, four shoulder buttons, the SP Add 2, and over here we have a volume cog. You need to work on your pronunciation. This comes with a 16GB CP microSD. Underneath we have the battery bay, and the battery is a BL5C. It's rated here at 1020mA, and the best thing about this battery is we can easily replace it. They go for around $7 on AliExpress. Let's open her up. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So within your hands it feels a lot like an SP. And even though it is quite blocky, it is not uncomfortable. And at the price of only 30 bucks, I'm actually very happy with the D-pad and buttons. Here's the D-pad up close. A little soft, but good. And now the buttons. They feel like aspirin and bounce back just right. And the shoulder buttons. The two on the inside are slightly raised, making them easier to reach. Let's weigh this. The V90 is very light. Now it's time for the size comparison. The Pow Kitty V90 is slightly smaller than the Game Boy Advance SP. When opened up, it's roughly the same size as the RG353 VS. And here's the Pow Kitty Q90. And the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. If you don't have any of these, how about a Roy Bosch tea bag? Maybe you have a small Satsuma, a chip star, a trendy mobile phone from the movie The Matrix, some orange cigarette candy, some chocolate cigarette candy, a pack of playing cards, or a box of cereal. Let's see how long it takes to boot up. Usually I tell a few jokes, but instead I will give some V90 specs. This has a three inch chip screen, Slightly larger than what is in my pants. It has a battery up its butt. And it's red. And that was a cold boot. So the front end for the V90 is G Menu and X. And there are four categories we can flick through. Applications, emulators, games, and settings. This can emulate systems from the Game Boy all the way to the PlayStation 1. And once selected, we can choose from a list of games to play. We also have Homebrew, as well as ports, such as Cave Story, Doom, Quake, and Quake 2. Once we've finished playing, we need to power off from this menu, much like a Windows computer. Let's get to some gameplay. Here's Motocross Maniacs for the Game Boy. As soon as we switch to Final Fantasy Adventure... Ouch. Much like the Q90, this can be fixed by changing the firmware. Here's some Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance. So far, the V90 is great for the price, but I've noticed a few things. First, there are air bubbles at the edges of the screen. Russ at Retro Game Corps made a quick fix in his review, and it looks simple enough. Seems like we only need a pair of tweezers and a screwdriver. Let's get stuck in. Found these tweezers in the kitchen drawer, and I think my missus uses them to pluck her eyebrows out. Come on. Come, come on. Come, come, come on. <laughs> Flipping egg. This is not going to work. Next idea is to take off the screen protector without unscrewing the device. 
We just need to be very careful. And this is not looking good. Thankfully, this was only residue from the screen protector. We could just wipe it off. The second issue we had was actually very similar to the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. The sound was unfocused and had no bass. Thankfully for this device, it's actually quite an easy fix. We just need to unscrew the device, then switch these two wires from one of the speakers. And now to test. Perfect. Let's get back to the testing. Here's Game Boy Advance. And out the gate, it is actually working rather well. The screen of the V90 has a higher resolution than Game Boy Advance, but integer scaling is not possible. This means that the finer pixels may look a bit distorted and uneven. The games that need to use some hardware trickery like Duke 3D or Doom 2 will make this handheld slow to a crawl. This games from the get-go have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio with the border surrounding it. We can change this by using emulator settings to stretch it so it fits the screen. Moving on now to Super Nintendo, it's a bit of a mixed bag. 2D games run fine, but when you add Mode 7 or custom chips, the V90 starts to chug. In Donkey Kong Country, we can see the frame rate start to dip. Still playable, but not perfect. And here's what happens when you add Mode 7. Earlier Sega systems, like the Game Gear and Master System, run fine. But you will need to reconfigure controls with a Mega Drive. If you don't do this, you don't get a C button. Moving on to the PlayStation now, Here's Capcom vs SNK. Soon as the graphics are cached into memory, we can see that it plays quite well, and the D-pad has no issues when firing out the Hadoukens. But when we introduce 3D games like Tekken 3, we can see a nice amount of chug. Arcade emulation is quite limited, but the V90 will still be able to play most Neo Geo and CPS1 games well. CPS2 is the limit, so if you ever had a PSP, the V90 actually performs similar when it comes to emulation. When it comes to ports, these can be seen as the icing on the cake. A nice little extra. And that takes into account how difficult it is to aim on Quake 2. Any, if not all of the software issues we had can be overcome by using custom firmware. For this handheld, we have Bob and Miu CFW. If you want to see tutorials on installing one, check out Russ's website, which we've linked to down below. But how does the V90 compare directly to the Game Boy Advance SP? Well, outside of the 3D games not running 100%, and the screen not being as sharp, the V90 takes the cake. The V90 is a super affordable handheld that is small and has custom firmware available. We wish it had a bit more power, and the issues we ran into are easily fixable. But for the price, who can complain? If you need a system for the bog, and don't care for the PS1 and beyond, the Pauky V90 is a cheap and cheerful handheld to add to your arsenal. Or, a nice present for your friend. As we play Metal Slug, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Thank you for your continued support. We make video reviews, guides, as well as fix those cheap arcade boxes and the A500 Mini. If you'd like to help support the channel, check the links down below, or a simple like and subscribe would do us a solid. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! I am John Luke, and I have no clothes on.